hyperparesis is meant in ArcGIS. Okay, this shows you there is image, there is your classified result, and we need to tell uh, information about the accuracy of your classification in the form of table, in the form of some statistics. Okay, so let's talk about accuracy first. Okay, often you know students confuse accuracy with precision. Okay. But in remote sensing, we are very much interested in relating the classification result with the actual value, with the reference data. So that's what accuracy is. Accuracy is about how close a reading is to the actual value. Look at this figure. This is, this is a very good example. So the aim, the true value is considered, this is the center, okay? So the the experiment is around here. So it's not accurate, but it's precise. So precision is about how close several readings are to one another. Okay, the several readings are very much close to one another, but they are very much departing from the actual, the wanted result. Okay, but in here, it is accurate. At least one of the reading is close to the, 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 the wanted measurement but in terms of precision it is not okay this is e not this is neither precise nor accurate okay when you come to this they are very much close to the required value at the same time the, the, the several readings are close to one another so it is precise and accurate okay what we need in general is the satellite data your classification to be accurate, not actually precise if it's not. So accuracy is an expression of the lack of error. Okay? So error is the difference between the measurement and the true value of the measured. So it is a quantity being measured. So error does not include mistakes. Okay? In statistics, error is different from mistake. Mistakes are usually values that result from reading the wrong value. Okay? It does not, doesn't have to be included with error, okay? So during repeated repeated measure, measurements, none of the results can be preferred over the other in error, okay? This is what we, what we need, really, sensing. And there are critical steps that we need to follow in assessing the accuracy of a satellite image classification, okay? The first thing is to determine the total number of samples to be collected for each category, okay? You know, students often, they don't want to uh, report errors of their image classification result. But it is very important and crucial to report and to be honest in reporting errors, okay? So for that, you need to follow specific, you know, uh, steps. So determining the, the total number of samples to be collected for each category is very important. So if you have, you know, uh, if you have uh, specific categories, for example, if you have five land cover categories, a minimum of 50 samples for each land cover category is required. This is a general rule of thumb. And this can be increased or this can be uh, reduced. It all depends on, you know, the objective of the research, okay? For example, if the area is especially large and the number of classes are greater than, you know, 10, then the minimum number of samples should be increased to 50, I mean, 75 to 100 per category, okay? If it is 5, for example, 5 times 50 would be 250 samples for each category, I mean, uh, for the whole. So it all depends on the relative importance of that specific category. So you don't need to uh, equally distribute the number of samples that you are going to collect. Sometimes you give much emphasis for the class category that you are interested in. So, and also if you, you don't observe inherent variability within a specific category, you can reduce the number of samples, okay? The next thing, the next step is design proper sampling scheme. Okay, shall I follow a simple random sampling? Shall I follow stratified random sampling? Shall I follow systematic sampling? Okay, simple random sampling, you know, has, you know, has got its own problem. Okay, you know, you need uh, to, you, you might want your 
you know uh, sampling to follow a certain strategy so you don't need to follow this simple random sampling so sometimes you might need to stratify your uh, sampling based on different land cover types based on the variability so you don't need sometimes to follow this but sometimes there should there, there may be a systematic sampling okay this systematic sampling could be I should take sampling every four kilometers, for example, based on grid sampling techniques. So this has its own problem because sometimes you may have samples falling on inaccessible areas. In that case, so this may not be uh, essential to follow this. And the next step is to obtain ground reference information at sample locations. Okay. This may be facilitated by going to the field or by using high resolution satellite image. Produce the error matrix and evaluate the error matrix. If the error matrix is telling you that your classification result is poor, you need to do the classification again. Okay? So when we evaluate the error matrix, this is a general format. So the ground reference test information will be obtained will be put in the error matrix in the, in the form of column, while your classification result will be put in the form of rows, okay? The correctly classified pixels will be put, the counters will be put in the diagonal elements. This is a total number of uh, pixels, the total number of uh, collected sample, okay? This is row total, this is column total. So we can compute overall accuracy by uh, summing the diagonal elements over the total n okay the user's accuracy will be uh, determined by computing or by dividing the correctly classified pixel or count of that specific category over the row total of that specific class and producer's accuracy will be calculated by uh, dividing the correctly classified count of that specific class over the column total okay so the overall accuracy doesn't tell you information about the incorrectly classified pixels so you should add you should tell something about producer's accuracy and user's accuracy so if you talk about producer's accuracy it tells you information about the probability of a reference pixel being correctly classified okay and it's a measure of omission error while user's accuracy tells you information about how often the class on the map will actually be present on the ground, okay? So three of the matrices are very much uh, important and useful. So when we compare user's and producer's accuracy, it might, be, it might be misleading to report only the overall accuracy because, for example, have a look at this evaluation matrix. So if you see this, and the overall accuracy is 74%, and if we focus on deciduous, okay, the overall accuracy might be sufficient, but it may be misleading to, to report on his overall accuracy and to be satisfied with overall accuracy only. Okay, look at the classification accuracy of deciduous with regard to producer's accuracy, okay? It is 87%, so you might conclude that 87% percent producer accuracy and overall accuracy 74 percent might be sufficient for you but it might be misleading unless you continue and see the user's accuracy of the cds force classification it is 57 percent okay so although the producer of this map can claim that 87 percent of the time an area that was deciduous on the ground was identified as such on the map. A user of this map will find that only 57% of the time that the map says an area is deciduous, will it actually be deciduous on the ground? Okay, so it is not sufficient. So this high level of producer accuracy for deciduous might be observed because too much of the map is labeled deciduous, okay, in the map. But if you compare it with the ground, it's only 57% of the time that you are able to get that it's deciduous, okay? 
So there is significant confusion in discriminating the CDs from barren and shrubland. So it's not it's not sufficient. So the the pro, the producer of this classification has to redo the classification again. So we will we will do uh, this uh, in our uh, ArcGIS implementation how we are going to implement it. Okay. This is how you can run your classification accuracy assessment for classes with more than five categories or more than more than two categories but sometimes you may need to report your uh, classification accuracy for binary map okay for presence absence map for degrees not degrade for force non force for agriculture non agriculture maps okay in that case you develop this true class and a predicted class so you develop count of true positive and count of true negative and finally you can assess uh, see the accuracy matrix, the true positive rate, the true negative rate, precision and recoil. There are four. one, two, three, four, five, six. These are five measures of accuracy for a binary map accurate assessment. Okay, you can use also this. Now let's see the accuracy assessment implementation in ArcGIS. So the first thing is create accuracy assessment point. Okay, the input is your classification result. You can turn on this in Arc Toolbox, go to Segmentation and Classification. First, create accuracy assessment point, and then collect reference data from high-resolution satellite image, and then compute the confusion matrix. You can finish this in, in uh, two or uh, three steps, okay? Let's see its, its implementation in ArcGIS. We have the classification result of our, uh, our uh, supervised classification. Go to uh, segmentation and classification, and um, create accuracy assessment points. Give the feature class or the input raster. That is a classification result, MLC. Okay. Output accuracy assessment points. Where shall we put it? Under test, and let's call it what. Um, Accuracy assessment points. Okay, accuracy assessment points. And target field, is it classified? Yes, classified. And how many samples are you going to collect? Let's call it 50, 500. Okay, this will be determined by what the number of categories you have, the accuracy level that you want, or something like that. For the time being, 100 samples probably is enough. The sampling strategy. Shall I uh, select stratified random or shall I follow equalized stratified random? The difference between these two is if you if you stratify uh, randomly for each category, it doesn't necessarily equally distribute the whole samples. But in this in this sense, I have five categories, the hundred samples will be distributed equally. Okay? So each of the category will have uh, probably 20 samples equally. Sometimes you don't need to follow this equalized stratified random because some of the categories may be, you know, easy to classify. So you don't need to take much or uh, many uh, samples for that. So let's take, for example, equalized random stratified random. So click OK. OK, now here are our uh, samples already taken if you open the attribute of this it will under the classified this point says it is class one this point says class four but in ground truth there is no information you have to fill this by yourself so select this and click ground calculator and fill by uh, probably zero you don't have any information about it. you have to fill it by yourself okay so how do you fill this attribute table? Okay, how do you fill this ground truth information? By using GPS, going to the field and collect information about each of the points, okay? But for the time being, I will collect ground truth information by using uh, high resolution uh, imagery. You can use uh, add button in Gogglers, add base map in Gogglers, if you are connected, you can use imagery, okay, and add. 
okay wait some time if you have a very good connection it will uh, it will come immediately so let's let's wait some time yeah now let's see what each of the points all of these points are already water body so click on this and fill this information for example so it needs some time so select these points okay and see the selection and label what water body in our case water body is class 2 okay so you label 2 so you keep on labeling this by obtaining information from this high resolution imagery okay so since we don't have time for that for the time being i am going to make the whole information uh, similar with a classified one so click on field calculator uh, i choose classified and it is equivalent so i expect 100 percent accuracy so don't do it you need to uh, collect information about each of the points but for me now for this exercise i will make it similar so i expect 100 percent accuracy once i finish filling this what i need to do is to uh, compute confusion matrix okay so it asks me input accuracy assessment points this one output confusion matrix where shall i save it it asks me so uh, it says uh, accuracy accuracy so since it is in the table format so i will put pdf format pdf format click save and that's it so if you open this open attributes you have the accuracy in one go it is very simple in previous in the previous versions of ArcGIS, this kind of uh, utility was not there and it is it is highly improved and you can compute the accuracy assessment here is a user accuracy the kappa coefficient the producer accuracy uh, you can compute the overall accuracy by collecting 20 plus 20 plus 20 so you can report this by simply copy and and paste so thank you very much for uh, for uh attending this video lecture uh, attentively uh i'll see you next time in another video